hello hello welcome back to my channel it's been a while because i lost my sd card sim card sd card that held all my footage and yeah i lost the motivation because i filmed loads of videos and they all got lost but anyway i'm back found the motivation again and i am going to get straight into it this video has been highly requested from people over on my Instagram. If you are not following me over there, it's Flourish with Keandra. Please make sure to check that out with loads of eating disorder recovery tips, etc., mental health, reels, funny stuff, all about eating disorder recovery and mental health recovery. And the video that's highly requested is how do eating disorders affect romantic relationships and what you should do to kind of resolve those issues that, that eating disorders causing relationships. As you know, eating disorders are all consuming illnesses. The problem with eating disorders and relationships is normally the intimacy side of things goes first. Eating disorders don't just impact one's relationship with food. More often than not, they actually impact the relationship you have with other people. So if you're thinking about such a, I suppose, connected relationship, like one in an intimate relationship, it can be all consuming and affect it more than you might think. One of the main reasons why eating disorders affect romantic relationships is the desire for control. And the thing with relationships is it normally causes you to have to give up some control and communicate and compromise. But because eating disorders are so driven around control and the need for, I suppose, certainty and certain scenarios, especially around food, to be controlled, it can be really hard. It's not always about, I suppose, looking good for the other person. A lot of the time it comes down to unresolved trauma in childhood or early life that need to be controlled within one's, I suppose, surroundings and therefore the eating disorder presents as a good option there. Because relationships sometimes make you feel out of control, because sometimes you have to be spontaneous, things come up, it can lead to, I suppose, the more controlling aspects of a relationship to come out, especially with somebody with an eating disorder. It's not saying somebody with an eating disorder is controlling, but they struggle with the need to control things in their life, and therefore the eating disorder presents as a good option there, even though we know it's not a good option to be able to control things. The second reason is a lot of times your partner or somebody with an eating disorder may be trying to hide aspects of their eating disorder and not fully open up to their partner. I know when I was really struggling with an eating disorder and I was in a romantic relationship in the past, I hid a lot of my behaviours from my partner because I felt like I was going to be judged and I felt like they might try and wade in and change my behavior but I wasn't ready to change yet so it caused me to be really secretive and therefore my partner at the time thought I was a secretive person but really I was just trying to hide aspects of my eating disorder that I didn't think my partner would accept so there was two parts about it I thought they might reject me and not accept that behavior and the other side of it was I feared them trying to change my behavior and I wasn't ready to change. One of the, I suppose, main reasons why one might hide an eating disorder from a romantic partner. So if you're watching and you have an eating disorder and you're like, why am I hiding this from my partner? It's because of shame a lot of the time. You can feel quite shameful that that is the way of life for you and that your eating disorder is the, the way that you cope with things. A lot of the time your eating disorder makes you do things that isn't too nice to yourself and maybe even others, you know, lying to people that you wouldn't otherwise be a liar. So I lied a lot during my eating disorder. Technically one of my values is not to lie, but my eating disorder made me lie more to my partner and ones around me. And when you're trying to build a healthy, sustainable relationship, lying and shame and secrecy is not one of the qualities normally of it and that's why eating disorders are so hard when you have a relationship. The fourth reason, and so I've done three reasons so far, one of the fourth reasons why relationships are hard with somebody with an eating disorder is self-esteem. So normally those with eating disorders have very low self-esteem. Self-esteem is something that, you know, can be in different, people can hold in differing amounts. Somebody can have really high self-esteem, but actually be quite unconfident, uh, but could be like, have really high self-esteem and be really confident. Some people can have low self-esteem, but be really confident. And some people can be low self, have low self-esteem and be not confident at all. The reason that eating disorders affect self-esteem is they're normally around trying to please 
others and therefore you think you have low self-esteem and therefore need to do everything you can in order to fit in and that be image eating your behavior you know you feel like your self-esteem is so low that you don't deserve to eat a lot of it is built around self-esteem but when you're being vulnerable and intimate with a partner it normally comes with needing some level of self-esteem like you need to feel good within yourself that you can have a healthy balanced relationship if you have low self-esteem a lot of the times it can actually cause like a codependent relationship or you just feel so low and unworthy that you kind of unconsciously reject the person the next reason and this is quite a big reason why eating disorders affect romantic relationships so heavily is sex and intimacy so one of the main things and this is both for men and women who have eating disorder is it really affects your libido and your sex drive and that is because hormonally your hormone profile is reduced when you restrict you don't have enough energy for your hormones to work so in women you get lower estrogen levels in men you get lower testosterone levels so for women lower estrogen causes lower libido it causes i suppose painful sex tiredness irritability you don't want to be intimate because you're biologically not designed at that point to be intimate like your body's like no you shouldn't reproduce you shouldn't have sex you haven't got enough available energy to have sex therefore we're going to shut down that desire periods go for women you know men's sperm count reduces biologically you're not in a position to be intimate so therefore you can start rejecting now on the flip side of this why a partner might be so you know upset is they don't understand why you're suddenly starting to reject them and might feel like they are unworthy of love and it can become this quite toxic situation where an individual doesn't want to have sex because biologically they are unprogrammed to because of restriction or even that the binge purge cycle can affect hormones so so much that the partner doesn't understand so it come kind of this this back and forth cycle which is really negative but the other side of that is a lot of time both men and women struggle with feelings of i suppose their body image not feeling good enough in sex feeling like they're going to be judged from their body image that kind of I suppose very internal self-critical self-sabotage look on themselves so it all comes down to these really bad feelings surrounding sex and relationships that a lot of the time your partner who hasn't got an eating disorder doesn't understand and this is why it's so important once i get to the next part of the video is how to navigate a relationship with an eating disorder especially if you're in recovery it can be a really good chance for you to kind of recover your relationship as well what i would say is if you have developed an eating disorder whilst in a relationship it's important to follow steps in order to save your relationship because take it from experience like in the past when i've had a romantic relationship it's probably broken down because of my eating disorder but i didn't realize at the time because i didn't know how to communicate things properly the last reason why eating disorders affect romantic relationships so heavily is because as counterintuitive as it might seem eating disorders are not about weight and not about food and ultimately one with an eating disorder if it's a restrictive eating disorder especially will never be good enough thin enough in the eyes of themselves let alone you so they put so much energy into trying to control themselves and trying to be the perfect individual or trying to fit a standard that they'll never meet that they don't have any energy to put in the relationship and as many people know relationships are full-time jobs not really but they take a lot of work and if there's no available i suppose energy lack of food and lack of actually headspace then relationships can break down and that's why it's so hard because the other person is like well you're not spending any time with me you're spending all this time i don't know fitting cultural ideals exercising dieting you know all of these beauty regimes that many people do with eating disorders that it can become quite distant and broken how can you help somebody with an eating disorder now it's a really important part of this video because ultimately I can go through all the reasons why eating disorders and romantic relationships don't really match up but a lot of the time people are in relationships while they have an eating disorder or in recovery and it's important to know how to keep that relationship sacred healthy loving and that you feel supported within one because a lot of the time the person with an eating disorder in a relationship is scared vulnerable they feel shame guilt they don't know how to navigate it but if you watching this are the person in a relationship with somebody with an eating disorder these are the ways that you can help or at least 
if you have an eating disorder, you can tell your partner this is how you need to be helped. A very, very important point to start with as well is if you are supporting somebody with an eating disorder in a relationship, please make sure to look after yourself because you can't help somebody else if your cup isn't full. So make sure to protect yourself as well. And that is gonna be a point that I get to. So number one, educate yourself. Education is key. Eating disorders are minefields. So number one, scroll on the internet with reputable sites. There's a lot of charity sites, Beats, Center for Change, NEDA, so National Eating Disorder Awareness websites that have a lot of information on eating disorders and at the information on how to support somebody with an eating disorder. So I would say educate yourself. Look at Instagram pages like myself, like mine, um, which... I have loads of posts on how to support somebody with an eating disorder so it might be really beneficial for you to to look at that and educate yourself so you are armed with the facts when you're going to speak with someone you know why they are acting in the way that they are they're not just unusual they're not just presenting unusually it's because they've got an illness number two be careful with your words again i've done a post on this on my on my social media about what not to say to somebody with an eating disorder people with eating disorders can be very sensitive to people's words even if your words are well meant they can pick apart sentences so be very careful try and limit things about appearance about food around somebody with an eating disorder try not to ask questions about what they've eaten what they've not eaten whether they're looking better, whether they're looking worse. The reality is your partner is constantly thinking about these things anyway, so try and not poke the bear, if that's the right way of saying it. Like, as the thing is, this is why education is so important, as you educate yourself about what is useful to say to someone or what an eating disorder is about, you will start to use your words more carefully. Number three, support your partner. So it's very easy to become, I suppose, overprotective, policing, very critical of your partner because you're frustrated that they won't change their behavior so quickly. Eating disorders take months, years, decades to recover from. And ultimately that can seem like a very scary prospect when you're supporting someone with an eating disorder. But what I would say is it's good to be compassionate, not policing. So if somebody's got a meal plan, it's trying to support them through that. Ask them what they need. Do they need words of affirmation? just you to be there, you to give them a gentle nudge when they need to eat. Ask them what they need. Ultimately, they might not know what they need, but try not be policing and critical of what they're eating and what they're not eating. Try and see if they can open up and be honest with you as well. Communication is key in a relationship and not only in a relationship normally, but especially if somebody's struggling with a mental health condition, communication is key. If you're struggling yourself, don't necessarily say that they are the cause of your problems, but say, you know, I'm struggling to know how to help you. Please, can we do this together? Be there for them, be non-judgmental. Don't try and say that they're doing the wrong things. Just be there in a kind, compassionate way. Ultimately, they just feel very lost, very scared, and they want love. And if you're if you prove to them and support them and say to them, you know what, I am there for you, no matter what, and we're gonna get through this, they will feel a lot more supportive than if you are being critical and over-policing. And finally, and maybe one of the most important things if you are supporting somebody with an eating disorder is find support yourself. So be that, speak to a friend, speak to family members, speak to a therapist, a trained counselor, talk to a charity, there's support groups out there. Ultimately, it comes down to your ability to process your own emotion. You might be really scared. You might feel rejected yourself because of like the things I said at the start about the intimacy side of things. You might need somebody to help work through these things for you because then you might become lost. So try and find support yourself so you can support other people. Remember, and this is very key to remember after all of this, please don't lose hope in your partner. There is hope for them there is support for them there is a prospect of them recovering they just might need a few months weeks years decades however long it is of support to get there but ultimately don't give up on them remember why you are with them you might have been with them without an eating disorder at the start hold on to the hope of that person coming back but also if you got with somebody with an eating disorder you're going to find out that the person that you've thought you were with is actually maybe a more vibrant less controlling less rigid person than you first met and that's going to be a really exciting prospect please bear with them be kind not just mental be careful with yourself whoever is watching this whether that be a partner 
or somebody struggling with an eating disorder, you are not to blame, nobody is to blame, you're going to get better. Just hold on to the light at the end of the up tunnel and you will get there. Please make sure to subscribe and turn the notification bell on so you get updates of when I do upload videos. Now that I've got my motivation back, I will be uploading them regularly. Please leave comments on what you want videos on. I'm happy to cover any topics around eating disorders, mental health, or just general videos whatever you'd be interested in seeing, please let me know. We're going to get there. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you soon. Bye-bye.